Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in to uh, Eagles Haven Ministry, EaglesHavenMinistry.com, and EliyahuChannel.com. Ha, Ruha, Eliyahu. On YouTube, uh, I thank you for tuning in this Shabbat. Oh, it's wonderful to come into your home and to visit with you today. Uh, we just praise Yah for this Hayom of opportunity to come with you and fellowship. Hallelujah. Uh, of course, we're going to continue. This is part two of the seven covenants. We are working on the Abrahamic covenant this Yom. And if you're watching us by live stream or pre-recorded, either by CD or DVD, we just thank you for tuning in. If you're watching, as you see on the screen, you see Abrahamic, the, the covenant that was about to be reached with uh, uh, his son, I mean with the father. And of course, we get the covenant, Abraham, Ishak, Yaakov. So Ishak is, Abraham is taking Ishak. But also we got to remember there was the, the splitting of all the, of the, the animals and the blood. They ran in the middle and he fell asleep trying to keep the flesh away where the blood ran. And that was another portion of the Abrahamic covenant. But we're going to continue now. And uh, let's go ahead and have a time of prayer. Abba Father, Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Right now in the Shem of Yeshua Mashiach, I pray for them that are watching by live stream that the same anointing that's in this room right now, the presence of your Ruach HaKodesh will be present with them, even if it's recorded later, for them to watch later or live, that they would receive and feel your presence. We ask that all, <clears throat> excuse me, mind-blinding demons and also all forms of a blockage towards the Torah, the Tanakh, the Brikadash of understanding of, of the scriptures of the covenants will melt away and be blown in the wind and the Shem of Yeshua and become shaft in the wind and blow all doubt and unbelief will be shaft in the wind and blow away. And I pray in the Shem of Yeshua that Emunah, the belief and the trust of Yahuwah, Yeshua Mashiach, will come upon them of the Torah and the Tanakh. And Father, we just thank you. We praise you for this opportunity. And we ask for the same anointing to be there with them. And I greet everybody, all the all the mishporka, all the goy and the goyim and the gur and the goyim, the sojourners and the one that feel the ones that feel alienated from coming in. All of you, I greet you and welcome you as them that are advanced and know they are grafted into the house of Israel, as well as them that are learning and beginning in the emunah, to call those things as not as though they are, and speak forth that they are no more uh, of the form of the Christian community, and they don't have the confusion of the misidentity of the messianic movement, but that they are part of the house of Israel, in the Shem of your, the Bayit Yesharel. So I welcome all the house of Ephraim and the uh, ben, ben Yoshef and all them that are watching all over the world that are tuning in or watching by tu tuning in by pre-recorded session on Ustream as well. So let's go ahead and get started and praise Yahuwah for this time that we get to come to your home and celebrate this precious moment. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it to so you can visualize in the screen what we are. This is the covenant that we are participating in of the Abrahamic covenant. And we're going to Bereshit, Genesis. And we're going to start at Bereshit, Bereshit, chapter 12 verse 8 and i have it already on the screen so i'm going to go ahead and read it from the i'll go ahead and read it from the, the king imus verse 8 and then we'll go to isr and he removed from there onto a mountain on the east of bethel and he pitched his tent bethel on the west and 
Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto Yahuwah and called upon the name of Yahuwah. Now let's look at ISR. And starting from verse 7. And Yahuwah appeared unto Abram and said, To your seed I give this land. And he built there an altar to Yahuwah who had appeared to him. Verse 8. And from there he moved from one altar he built where the father spoke to him to the mountain in the east of Bethel. Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east and he built there an altar to Yahuwah and he called on the Shem of Yahuwah. Okay. Now let's go to, this is the first portion where he's getting ready to set up um, his, the whole sacrifice or the slaughter for the father to enter in and speak forth into the covenant. And we're looking at now Bereshit chapter 13 verse 4. Starting from the ISR. To the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abraham called on the name of Yahuwah. On the Shem of Yahuwah. Now. It, it always says he went to the place. Unless he says here to the place of the altar which he had built made there at first so he had these delegated areas Bethel was one of them but you know you can see in in, in verse eight seven there was another altar he built first the father spoke to him then he went to Bethel and he built another and it was a getting the father was getting him set up for his covenant so now let's go to chapter 15 and we're going to go ahead and begin in Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 After these events, the word of Yahuwah came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid of Abram, for I am your shield, and your reward is exceedingly great. And Abram said to uh, my controller, Yahuwah, what would you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, See, you have given me no seed. And see, one born in my house is my heir. And see, the word of Yahweh came to him, saying, This one is not your heir, heir, but he who comes from your body is your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look now toward the Shammai and count the luminaries, if you are able to count them. And he said to him, see, so, excuse me, so all are your seed. So are your seed. Verse 6. And he believed Yahuwah, and he reckoned it to him for righteousness. He had emunah, he believed in trust. And he said to him, I am Yahuwah, who brought you out of Ur, of the Chaldeans, to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, My controller, Yahuwah, whereby do I know that I possess it? And he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, and a three-year-old ram, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. So this was the, the, the these particular, it wasn't just a lamb or a goat, it was several items. It was the three-year-old heifer. The three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. These are based on the different characters, on the, of the personalities of these particular three-year-old sacrificial slaughter of these animals. And he took all these to him, and he cut them in the middle, and placed each half opposite the other but he did not cut the birds and the birds of prey came down on the carcasses 
and Abram drove them away. And it came to be when the sun was going down and a deep sleep fell on Abram that see a frightening great darkness fell on him. And he said to him, Know for certain that your seed are to be sojourners in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. He's giving him, the, he's actually speaking into him and uh, he is giving in Nubuah, or Nabah, Nubah, they call prophesying. He prophesied to them a Nabuah, Nabu Nabah act of speaking to them in the future that there'll be a 400 years. But the nation whom they serve, I am going to judge and afterward let them come out with great possessions. Now, as for you, you are to go to your fathers in Shalom. You are to be buried at a good old age. Then in the fourth generation, they shall return here for the crookedness of their of the Amorites. So he's talking about 50 year generations. And it came to be when the sun went down and it was dark that see a smoking and burning torch passing between those pieces. The final verse. And on the same Yom, Yahuwah made a covenant with Abram, saying, I have given this land to your seed from the river of Misarim to the great river, the river Euphrates. And you could go on the map and look at the covenant of that, of those uh, boundary lines. And you can see where it goes all the way into what we call Iraq and to the borders of Egypt. Of course, we got the Gaza Strip and uh, where the great battle was, was fought. And Israel, I don't believe Israel should have gave that portion back, but uh, you can see the border lines according to scriptures in maps. So he made a covenant, and this is called the Abrahamic Covenant. Chapter 17, and we're going to start in verse 1. And it came to be when Abraham was 99 years old that Yahuwah appeared to Abraham and said to him, I L L Shaddai, walk before me and be perfected. Messiah, it gives you footnote reference, Messiah, the same command in Matthew 5, 48. You know, a lot of people say, uh, no, I'm only human. No one is perfect. I wanted you to take heed to this fairy tale. This is a fairy tale of preconceived information. In the scriptures, it the word human does not exist. It's not there. In the King James or other, you have to get a real modernized, watered down, international, modern way Bible or something and to see the word human. It's not there in the original Greek. It's not there in the original Hebrew or uh, Hellenic Greek. So, and even in King James Bible. Okay. So, uh, now the word perfect, the word perfect is the perfection of maturity. In Hebrew, the word perfect is a little slightly different than you know of, okay? And we're going to look at it a little bit. It's Hebrew number 8549, which is tamim. And it means entirely morally integrity, truth, without blemish, complete. I'm going to click it. You can see in the bottom portion. Ta, ta, miam, miam. And it has a root word of 8552. Entire, literal, figuratively, or morally. Integrity, truth, without blemish, complete, full, perfect, sincerely, sound, without spot, undefiled, uprightly, whole. Now, in Christianity, they have a tendency with preconceived thought saying no one's perfect, we're only human. Even the, even the preachers preach that. But yet, in the scriptures, there's more, way more than two or three witnesses of abundance of scriptures in the Berikadash as well as in the Torah and the Tanakh that the Father ordered and commanded us to walk perfect before Him. Be perfect for I'm perfect, says Yahuwah. In the Hebrew mindset in Israel, when I asked a rabbi one time, what is your commentary understanding of being perfect? He says, a child is learning how to walk. 
he slips and falls, that is perfect. He took two steps. The child grows up and he slips, try to run. He gets up, scrapes his bloody knee and keeps running. That is perfection. Perfection is you, you, you don't sit there and moan and groan and, and wobble and cry that you didn't get to walk. No, you, 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 you celebrate you took a few steps. You celebrate that you got back up and keep going. And the only way you feel the scratch of the wound is you keep running. You get a little of your sweat on it and feel the pain on the wound, of the scratch pants or whatever. So perfection is learning with experience, trials and tribulations, build endurance, patience and strength. And so we go through this in order to mature and become perfected because in Hebrew, perfect, as we just read, is a little different than the English translation of what man thinks. And, they, and, and, and you know, since the ancient of days of the, of the, I don't know if it came from the Catholic Church preconceivedly or the, or the Reformationists, or, or if it's just in the United States, I know some people I've talked to, they don't even, uh, they, they don't believe in that where only human will never be perfect because they know Torah and the Father repeatedly saying to people, walk before me perfect. As he said here to Abraham, if we are the seed of Abraham and we're walking in the seed of Abraham, we will walk in the perfection of the Hebrew understanding of that idiom. We will walk in it. If you claim to be the seed of Abraham and you renounce and say, ah, no, I'm only human, I will not be perfect, then you are dis excommunicating yourself from coming into the emunah and belief and trust as following the steps of belief and trust of emunah of perfection. It takes exercise and working out in order to build the muscle to go in advance into a higher level of increased weight for strength. And that takes perfection of learning everything about your body and the balance of the weight on the bar, on the dumbbells or whatever, to balance it properly when you're doing all your workouts. Okay. So if it takes time and maturity and to mature into Abraham, Abraham was tested or, or he was put to the refining fire of, of testing and refining fire in order to build up into the time where he's at in 99 years old and he's telling him walk now walk before me in perfection walk before me in truth walk before me in moral walk before me in morality and not without blemish and complete full perfect sincerely and undefiled by the world in the shem of yeshua some people cannot use all the words that we clean ourselves in as it says in Zechariah uh, Zachari and also in Ezekiel and other scriptures, that we, 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 we put away the old tongue and put on a clean lips and a new tongue and clean words. And of course, they, a lot of the Christian community like to quote the scriptures that the confession of your mouth will baraka you or curse you or berikot you or curse you or baruk you and curse you. But yet they don't want to use the correct words and come out. In total maturity some people do to a portion and then others they don't to another portion they're pretty content and settled and like i said this walk we walk of being a kodeshim tamadim uh type of zadik man of yahuwah uh, a man of alohim is is a, is a walk according to your desire to walk and mature into that level like abraham okay i don't want to put you down or make you feel um, convicted in any ways uh, because you're not trying but it's a slow process and it brings increase of how you want to walk and present yourself into walking into perfection and growing into perfection let's keep reading and I give my covenant between me and you and shall greatly increase you and Abraham fell on his face and Elohim spoke with him say As for me, look, my covenant is with you, and you should become a father of many nations. Now, if I look at this word nations, it is goy. The same word, well, it's, it's goy meaning uh, a foreign nation, and they put the word gentilis, this Greek uh, modern Catholic word in it, but it's really ethnos 
under, underneath everywhere in the brick Kadasha, they call the New Testament, the New Covenant, Renew Covenant. Uh, underneath the word Gentilis, Gentile, is the word Ethnos, which is related to the word of Goy or Goim, a, a, a person that is of ethnic other, a background other than um, of a Hebrew of the 12 tribes. Okay? A troop, animal fighting, a, a flight, a flight of locusts, heathen, nation, people, whatever. There's a lot of words here that are, were added to the, 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 the dictionary definition of translation. As time, they added little words and they got the Catholic input, Gentilis, instead of putting ethnos. So, the same word that they use for us, Yahuwah spoke to Abraham, that I'll make you a father of many goy, many ethnos, many foreigners. And so that's why we call him our father, Abraham, okay? Neither shall your name anymore be called Abram, but your Shem shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made you. Many. And I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and sovereigns shall come out of your of you and it's it, the sovereigns here and the sovereigns here is of course it's Malach, 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 uh, or Malachim many because even Solomon had uh, something like 12 or 15 I can't remember uh, uh, sons that became sovereigns of many nations scattered other than Israel so the seed of David was spread out Throughout the nations, of course, Great Britain tries to claim themselves to be, uh, or should I say, the royalty of the German family uh, try to claim to be of the seed of David. That's why they stole, uh, they took uh, in 1100 the seat of David and placed it in, in, in Great Britain. And these German uh, rulers of Great Britain sit on it, saying they're sitting on the seat of of David. And you can Google it online and look at the pictures of the seat of David in Great Britain where the queen once in a while sits in it and other people, prince and other people demonstrate. It's in like a, it's a special room that they have, right? A little secret sauce. They, they're trying to claim to claim the, that they're the seat of David, but they're not. They come from a different seed line, okay? Shall come out of you and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you in their generations and for an everlasting covenant to be of Yah unto you and your seed after you. So it's repeated over and over and over and over and over in these verses I'm giving to you. It's a proclamation, declaration. It is a, a, a what we call a prophetical act, but we don't use the word prophetical in Greek. We, we, we use the word nebuah, or Naba act, okay? And Elohim, Elohim said to Abraham, as for you, guard my covenant, you and your seed after you throughout their generations. So there's specifically to be a completeness of the covenant, you have to guard it. So when people call themselves believers, okay? They call themselves Christians, and they don't keep the covenant. <laughs> they don't keep the covenant. I had one friend, he said he was circumcised, and he didn't know why his parents circumcised him. And I said, well, he was preparing you to, to be grafted in the house of Israel, because that's the Abrahamic covenant. And there's two protocols, or two to three protocols, that you, it, it, you, could, you could be... You could you could walk in the Messiah's cleansing blood and walk as a believer and grafted into the house of Israel as a sojourner, or them of the of a mixed multitude that came out of Egypt and be a partaker of them. But if you want to really walk, really go into another level, there's there's the covenant of Abraham of circumcision, and this is my covenant which you guard between me and you and your seed after you. Every male child among you is to be circumcised. It's a blood covenant. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. It shall become a sign of the covenant between me and you. And a son of eight days is circumcised by you. 
every male in, child in your generations, he who is born in your house or bought with silver from any foreigner who is not of your seed. He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your silver has to be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So the covenant is even for the other sojourners of the ones that are being grafted in to the house of, of Abraham. Okay. So even of the ones that are that that came out of Egypt and also the one that in the future, those are the ones of the mixed multitude, but it started actually with Abraham, uh, even the ones that he that that came to work for him or he purchased. An uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, his high shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Very important to the seal of the Abrahamic covenant. Okay. And Elohim said to Abraham, as for Sarah, Sari, your wife, do not call her name Sari, for Sarah is her Shem. And I will breka her and also give you a son by her, and I shall breka her or breka her, and shall she shall become nations, goim, sovereigns of people are to be from her. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Is a child born to a man who is a hundred years old? Or is Sarah who is ninety years old to be, a ch to, be to bear a child? <laughs> Praise Yah. Hallelujah. You better believe it. That's going to happen. So there was a little doubt and unbelief, but yet he's walking in perfection, right? But he's going through a little perfected refining here because of this. He's dropping the bomb. Your name is now Abraham. Your wife's name is now Sarah. And you're going to have a child from your own loins. And she's 90 something years old. Okay. Now, everybody else after that, women that. South America or the Middle East have children at 50, 60, and they've been recorded even a 70-year-old woman, okay? If we have reference to the scriptures, we say, oh, well, if Abraham and Sarah can have a child, then we can't, you know? Of course, a lot of times in today's society, they try to tell the women, oh, your hormones are imbalanced, and you're going to have a deformed baby, or you're going to be with autism, pardon me, or some other disease, so you better just abort the child. Or you better cut your ovaries out. And see, by doing that stuff, what you're doing is you're asking, you're actually going against disobeying the father. You're disobeying the natural flow of the woman. When her ministration stops, then the, then the, see, the, the time is done. But you got to remember, Sarah was past the time of woman too. She stopped ministrating, right? Having her, her, her lunar cycles. So uh, the father supernaturally rejuvenated her like a young girl to have this child, okay? And Abraham said to Elohim, Oh, let Yishmael live before you. And Elohim said, No, Sarah, your wife, is truly son to you, sh excuse me, is truly bearing a son to you, and you should call his name Ishak, and shall establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant with his seed after him. As for Yishmael, as for him, I have heard you. See, I shall bracha him and shall make him bear fruit and greatly increase him. He is to bring forth 12 princes. The word prince is the same word we get where they cover in Hebrew the word, they cover it with, star, uh, with the word uh, stars. And, and it's really a luminary or a prince, a ruler, okay, a bright one. And uh, they cover it with this five-pointed word, a star, called stars. So he's telling him he is to bring forth 12 prince. So it's he being used properly here. And I shall make him a great nation. So he become a great nation, a great ethnos, a great goy or goyim. But my covenant I established with Yishak, with Sarah, is to bear 
to you at this set time next year. So it locked it in. And when he had ended speaking with him, Elohim went up from Abraham. Now, of course, in the Quran, they teach otherwise, and they have other footnotes of other literature and material, and they say that the covenant really went to Ishmael and not to Ishak. They reversed the story. They actually reversed the story. Okay, But we know that our Torah is not tampered with, with the repeated translations to be the same in Hebrew, and all the original Qurans that were originally written about 100 years, 50 years between 30 to 50 years after Muhammad died, uh, uh, Iman rose up and made, you got a blue Quran, a red Quran, and a green Quran, and he ended up making a new edition, and he destroyed all the original scrolls, so you don't have, right now, original translation from Muhammad. You have a, 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 a transliteration from a guy that rewrote it, okay? And you'll never see any any pop-up of scrolls like we do in the Hebrew scrolls popping up, finding the authentic, because he had a pile of it burning in Mecca. He burnt them all in Mecca, so he destroyed all the original. And historically, I don't know why I'm saying it, somebody needs to hear it, uh, historically all the way up to about 50 years after Muhammad's death, the, he, he called on A-L-I, A-L-L-A-H, Eli Allah. Eli Allah, Eli Allah, meaning the mighty one of mighty ones. And then they changed it to Allah. But also when they came to the gate of Jerusalem, uh, 50 years after he died, they said in the name, historically, this is documented, in Islamic material as well as in Jerusalem material, that he called, uh, he said, we, I command you to open the gate of surrender in the name of, of El Yah. El Yah. And that's why the Israelites allowed a vote with the Catholics at that time to agree to open the gate and let them in and surrender without a fight. And the Muslims didn't kill nobody, didn't rape nobody, didn't chop nobody's head, nothing. They allowed everybody to practice their own religion for 50 solid years before they built that building on top. And, um, and then things started to change and they changed the name from El Yah to Ali, Yah, Al, Ali Allah to Allah. So there was some some translations and it's not a name of a deity it's the name of a principality and it's the name of the mighty one of mighty ones it's not a name it's just a mighty one of mighty ones like we say Elohim and they say Elohim some people but uh, Elohim okay so now let's go this is this this completes the covenant of the Abrahamic covenant now we're going to go to the Moshe covenant okay and we're going to go to Exodus Shemot chapter 6 2 through 8 and the woman conceived and bare a son, and she saw that he was a lovely child, and she hid him three months. And when they mean by lovely child, I want you to see this, okay? Because Moshe, I mean Noah, was an, like an albino. It, so, it glowed so bright that it, it lit up a room, according to the book of Jubilees and other books of Enoch. If we look at... The number system, 2896, means a wide sense. Likewise, a, a noun known as masculine or and the feminine together, singular, plural, but a, a, a good man or a tobe man or woman. Uh, let me get beautiful, best, better, bountiful, cheerful, ease, Favor, fine, glad. In other words, he was extraordinarily different. There was something about even his features and look and his character that was quite different. Okay? Just like Noah. And let's read. And when she could hide him no longer, she took an ark of wick, wicker for him and coated it with tar and pitch and put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the edge of the river. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her young women wa were walking by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, 
she sent her female servant to get it and open it and saw the child and see the baby wept and she so she had compassion on him and said of course he looked different too this is one of the children of the hebrews and his sister said to pharaoh's daughter shall i go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you. So that was um, uh, that was actually Moshe's sister. So is Moshe a Hebrew name? No, it's an Egyptian name. It's a Misarim name. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the girl went and called the child's mother. And, and Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me. Then I shall pay your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew up, grew, excuse me, and she brought forth to him, brought him to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's, uh, excuse me, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moshe, saying, because I have drawn him out of the waters. Okay, now, I'm stopping there. I just opened up the description. Let's go to chapter 12. And we're going to continue to verse 11. I know there's not a reading, but I really want you to get the understanding of these different covenants that were laid out. These are, like I said in the beginning of part one, layers of foundation. If any of the layers of the foundation are, are, are rotten or distorted or they become powdery or cracked or destroyed by the elements of earthquakes and other things and and water uh, complete water like in a foundation of a building and the cement becomes like powdery then what happens the building has to be torn down and a new foundation has to be laid these are layers of foundation that cannot be moved so you can't say the old you call you the christian community called the old testament done away with because if you do that you got to do away with the with the first six covenants of the foundation of the seventh of Yeshua. okay so now let's begin to read Speak to all the congregation of Yisrael, saying, On the tenth yom of this month, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the, of the beans, according to each man's need, you make your count for the lamb. Let the lamb be a perfect one, a year old, and take it from the sheep or from the goats. And you should keep it until the fourth yom of the same month. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the evenings. Between the evenings. Now, you notice that it said it could be from the sheep and the goats. Either way. We just had a little... Uh, goat it's all solid white you can see the little tiny horns coming out but it looks just like a lamb but the ears are a little bit hanging down instead of outward you know than a little baby lamb so there's a state category because it says it can be taken from the sheep or the goats you follow what i'm saying of course eagles haven has goats here we used to have sheep so uh chuck used to have sheep here so we we know all this process and what, what goes on and the birthing and everything. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts on the lintels of the house where they eat. And they shall eat the flesh of that on that yom, or on that night, excuse me, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boil it all with water, but roasted in fire its head with its legs and its upward inward parts and do not leave of it until morning and what remains it of it until morning you are to burn with fire completely when this when the yom comes up you're supposed to crispy critter it and there's something about it too because we did this before we practiced and exercised it to to get uh to walk it out and learn about it and walk it out of course we didn't put blood on the doorpost i've heard friends done that i've heard a guy that did that in emunah 
And uh, when he did it in the morning, the, the stained blood on his white doorpost of his house disappeared. There was no more stain. So that was supernatural because blood don't do that. Blood don't disappear from wood or seabed and stuff like that. Because you got to put it in the earth and then it goes into the earth. That's You got to pour it in okay, and cover it. And so he had a supernatural experience when he woke up in the morning, like the Passover of the lamb, okay, and the, and the blood, uh, the, make, the, the, the death messenger from coming to your house, okay, on the doorpost. And this is how you eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is your Passover of Yahuwah. It is your Peshach of Yahuwah. So, in Christianity, in the Christian community, they do celebrate Passover. But they don't just celebrate it according to Torah, according to the right rule of Torah, Torah in the, that form of the feast, and walk out those three feasts, those feasts, with, especially with unleavened bread and everything. They, they, have a, they have a barbecue ham and all that garbage. We, we don't have ham, we have lamb, okay? And so, and it shall pass through the land of Misarim, that night and shall smite all the firstborn in the land of Misarim, both men and beasts, and all the mighty ones of Misarim shall shall execute judgment. Okay, and all the and all the mighty ones of Misarim, I shall execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. There was ten specific mighty ones, false mighty ones, but these were principalities and powers of religious dark world, spiritual wickedness in high places. And of course, I'm not going to, this is not the message to go on. In it. There was 10 mighty ones. One was the energy of light, the ability to have energy and light. That's why he turned the lights off in Egypt, made it dark. And then he supernaturally lit up Goshen. Okay. And that's why uh, death, the final one, uh, they worship this messenger that, that able to take death and also give life, they believe, or give high. Okay. So every plague is something they worship. He, he, he actually tacked their 10, top 10, I would say, say the top 10 mighty ones, the top 10 deities, okay, of that time in Egypt. I know in the movies today, we have the movie Risen, which speak some Hebrew words and Yahushua, and, I, and, it, and I'm, I haven't been able to see it, I want to go see it, but in some of the theaters, it's losing the audience to the movie, and I, excuse me for saying it, the gods of Egypt because of all the special effects and it's stealing it's like the movie risen is a good movie and it's telling it's talking about the story of Yoshua being resurrected he is risen he's risen and here they are coming in and putting out at the same time in competitiveness uh, of an and, and calling it the gods of Egypt with all the fantastic uh, uh, effects of the mighty ones of Egypt and I haven't even read the, seen a clip of it. If the Father will permit me to go watch it, because I want to see Risen first. And if it, if there's a lot of media, Illuminati, a pagan stuff that I can edit it or look at it to use to speak against or whatever, I might watch an edited proportion on YouTube or something that a believer is uh, showing. But both man and beast and all, all the mighty ones of Misterim, I shall execute judgment. There were ten mighty ones, ten plagues. Verse 13, and the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I shall pass over and let the plague not come on you to destroy you when I smite the land of Misery. So this is the destroying type of messenger. And this Yom shall become, shall become to you a remembrance and you shall observe it as a festival to you, to Yahuwah throughout your generations. Observe it as a festival in everlasting Torah, right rule, prescribed instruction. Now look at this verse now in verse 14 carefully. It is a what? It is to be remembered. It is to be observed. It is a festival. It is not Christmas, Easter, or some other pagan hall, uh, a special day that is in the United States, or in Great Britain and Canada. It is a festival to Yahuwah. He, it's his festival. He, he invites us and we get to go. Throughout your generations. So it's all the generations. Observe it as a festival. In, in everlasting Torah right rule. Come on now. Torah right rule. 
It's not this Catholic pagan word, law. Okay, That word's only five, three to four hundred years old and before it was spelled L-E-W. Okay? In, in, uh, of course, it says here, throughout your generations you shall keep it at a feast by an ordinance forever. So the Kimaim is kind of, it's, 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 the, it's the Olam. The Olam is, is, is the right rule. The ordinance is similar to Kuka, which is appointed custom manner, ordinance site, statute. It is a statute and ordinance forever. Okay. The, in the other translation, they say Torah, but it's not, the Torah is not here. But Torah is related, people say ordinances and prescribed instructions. Also, a statute is a part of Torah. Okay. It is forever. How many don't understand what forever means <laughs> out there? It is a forever covenant. It is not to in any way to be saying it is the old covenant. It's all done away with. It's the Old Testament. That word testamentum, as we learned earlier, is in the beginning of the part one. It is a Catholic legal word that has nothing to do with covenants. Okay. Seven yoms shall you shall eat unleavened bread. Indeed, on, on the first yom you shall cause leaven to cease from your house. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first yom until the seventh yom, that bean shall be cut off from Israel. See, these are these are very serious everlasting covenant. We don't we as the house of Israel do not want to be cut off. We don't want to be pushed aside or cut off, spiritually speaking, okay? And on the first yom is, is a Kodesh gathering, and on the seventh yom you, you have a, a Kodesh gathering. No work at all is done on them, only that which is eaten by every being that alone is prepared for you. So you can work and you can cook and all that, but it's, it's actually like a Shabbat, a high Shabbat. And you shall guard the festival of unleavened uh, bread for the Hebrew understanding of that unleavened bread, which has all the hoes and the lions of the stripes of the Messiah. For on the same yom I brought your divisions out of the land of Bessarim, and you shall guard this yom throughout your generations. An everlasting Torah. Again, an everlasting Torah. It cannot be tampered with and changed. And... Anybody that does not that has leaven, and leaven is, a, is symbolic for sinful nature of misrin, uh, you're cut off. So anybody with sin is cut off. I'm reading it from Orthodox Jewish Bible right now, and you shall be shomar to safeguard the matzot, the matzot. For on uh, this very yom I brought you tzaos out of eretz misrin. Therefore shall you be shomar over this yom in your generations by a hach kot, kot olam. Verse 18. In the first month, on the 14th yom of the month, in the evening you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st yom of the month in the evening. I'm going to stop there because we're going to rehearse this as we go through the feast. Let's go to chapter 24, verse 7 and 8. And he, took, and he took the book of the covenant. What? The book of the covenant. And he and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that Yahuwah has spoken, he shall do and obey. The book of the covenant, the Torah. And Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, See, the blood of the covenant which Yahuwah has made with you concerning all these words. So the whole word was read. After it was read, he sprinkled the blood to seal the covenant on the people. Chapter 31, verse 12. And we're going to read verse 12 through 18. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, And you speak to the children of Israel, saying, My Shabbats you are to guard by all means, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. 
to know that I am Yahuwah setting you apart. And only the only sign, footnotes, the only sign of the Yahuwah setting us apart, the only sign of the everlasting covenant it is the Shabbats, one of them being the seventh Yom Shabbat. This is repeated in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, and verse 20. So there is a reference for you. Now remember, we, we learned in the beginning the first covenant was the Shabbat. And if, if a covenant comes in, they don't, it's not like a, a relay. The relay is passed, so we don't have to keep the last one. And pass it to the next. Oh, we don't have to keep the last one. No, these are layers of foundation, like you're building a high-rise building. There's certain layers of concrete and steel that have to be laid a certain way and a certain form and a certain strength of cement, different than a one-story superficial building. Okay? So this is the layers of the foundation thereof. And you should guard the Shabbat, for it is a set of a Kodesh to you. Everyone who profanes it, profanes it, excuse me, it shall certainly be put, he shall, or it shall be certainly put to death. For anyone who does work on it, that being shall be cut off from among his people. So they're, they're cut off, they're excommunicated, okay? And you might get stoned too if you're not careful. Six yoms it is done, and on the seventh it is Shabbat of rest. Kodesh to Yahuwah. Everyone doing work on the Shabbat Yom shall certainly be put to death. And I share I taught about that already in part one. And the children of Israel shall guard the Shabbat to observe the Shabbat throughout their generation as an everlasting covenant. So they're rehearsing the information of what to guard of the covenants. Between me and your children of Israel, it is a sign forever. For in six yoms, Yahuwah made the Shamaim and the earth. And on the seventh yom, he rested and was refreshed. So we know the covenant is the covenant of creation. And when he had ended speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moshe two tablets of witnesses and tablets of stone written with the finger of Allah. Now let's go as we understand this covenant that's everlasting. We're rehearsing the first four covenants <laughs> to be rehearsed. The circumcision, the covenant of the washing, the cleansing, the Abrahamic covenant, the, the covenant of creation, the Shabbat. Now we're going to go to the Davik covenant. 2 Samuel. And you know what's amazing? I was sharing with um, Samuel Bet, chapter 7, verse 8 through 16. I was sharing with a, 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 a Christian brother, but he's more coming out into Messianic. And I was sharing about the covenants and it's, and there was another person there. They didn't know nothing. They said, oh, there was only old and new. And there was only first and, la and the second. And they call it the last. They don't know that there's going to be another covenant in New Jerusalem. When, the, when he takes the cup, it says in, in Lucas, he will not take the cup again until he makes an everlasting covenant again with them. An addition to the seventh will be an eighth covenant. Okay. So he didn't, they didn't know that. But, the, but it's amazing that if you were to type it in on... YouTube, or you to type it in on images of Google, you'll see Christians <laughs> teaching as well. The There's five covenants, some say six covenants, seven. One guy had eight covenants. And these were Christians, okay? And teaching from the creation covenant all the way up. So, and these people probably had a little more, I didn't study them or watch them, but they probably had a little more understanding that the covenants are everlasting. Because once you study the covenants, you realize they're everlasting. Okay, so let's continue on verse 8. And now say to my servant David, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, I took you from your pastor, he's out the pastor, <laughs> from following the flocks, to be a ruler over my people, over Yesharel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone and have cut off 
all, all your enemies from before you and have made you a great name like the name of great ones who are on the earth. And I shall appoint a place for my people, Yesharel, and shall plant them, and they shall dwell in a place of their own, and no longer be afraid, neither shall the children of wickedness oppress them again as at the first. Even from the Yom I appointed a ruler over my people, Yisrael, Yesharel, I have caused you to rest from all your enemies. And you have, has declared to you that he would make you a house. And your yoms are filled and you rest with your fathers. When your yoms are filled and you rest with your fathers, I shall raise up your seat after you who comes from your inward parts and shall establish his reign. He does build, he does build a house for you, my Shem, and I shall establish my throne for his reign forever. I am to be his father and he is my son. If he does perversely, I shall reprove him and with the rod of, of men and with the blows of the sons of men. So he says when, he, when Israel has a bad Melech, Melechim, Kims, he would use foreign nations to reprove, as well, of course, plagues, drought, and other things, okay, to reprove them. And he would, but the covenant of the seed continues of the week. Now, remember, this covenant he's telling, the father's telling David, is his seed, it's his sovereignty, and it's also the future of the Mashiach seed through his seed. But my kindness does not turn aside from him, as I turn it aside from Shaul, whom I removed from before you, and your house and your reign are to be steadfast forever before me, before you. Your throne is established forever. Again, what is forever? Forever is forever. You follow them say you cannot you cannot uh, you cannot get around that word forever established forever forever before you and your throne is established forever so even if when Israel was not in, in Jerusalem with anybody the seed was still there the Davidical seed is still there and we're going to go now to we're going to look in the in actually in the in the in the Brit Kadasha to Maashi. And we're going to go to chapter 2, verse 29 through 36. And this, this is still the Davidic, the Davidic covenant we're going to read. Yeah, in the Brit Kadasha. Men and brothers, let me speak boldly to you of the ancestor David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this young. And you can see a reference to verse 34. Being a Hanavi, then, and knowing that Elohim had sworn with an oath to him of the fruit of his loins according to his flesh to raise up the Mashiach to sit on his throne. If I were to go like this and I go to the Orthodox Jewish, it gives you a reference. It doesn't do that with the ISR. The Orthodox Jewish, therefore, being a Hanavi. And having da'as, that with a, a, a Shavuah, the oath, Hashem swore to him that from his loins, his zera seed, would sit upon his keshi. And it's got Telehim, Psalms 132.11, 89.3.4, and Shamuel, Ba'is, Ba'it, or Ba'is, set chapter 7, 12 through 13, giving you a reference let me go back to the other because this is hard for me for somebody, some people. Foreseeing this, he spoke concerning the resurrection of the Messiah, that he being, being was neither left in the grave, nor did he see, excuse me, his, did his flesh see corruption. You got to remember the Psalms they're giving reference to is David songs of praise. So it was, he even though it's not written in the conversation of David, 
or even the, the words of the promises that were spoken vaguely or kind of that we just read in, in, in Shamuel Bet by each chapter 7, 8 through 16, they give you a reference as we saw. But in the Psalms, when David was singing with his heart, giving praise and worship, he was revealing, he was prophetically, or how we say it in Hebrew, Nebuah or Nabah, the Messiah coming through his loins. Okay. Foreseeing this, he spoke concerning the resurrection of the Messiah, that his being was neither left in the grave, nor did his flesh see corruption. Elohim has raised up this Yahushua, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, be, having been exalted to the right hand of Elohim, and having received from the Father the promise of the Kodesh Ruach, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the Shamaim, but he, he himself said, Yahuwah said to my, my controller, Sit at my right hand, verse 35, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. That is Talaim Psalms 110.1. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that Elohim has made this Yahushua, whom you impale, both controller and Messiah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahushua Mashiach. We give you praise and honor, Father, and thank you for this opportunity to share this. I'm going to continue next uh, Shavuot. I'm going to continue this next week, next Shabbat. I'm going to reveal to you the, 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 seventh, the seventh covenant, and we're going to start with Matthew and work our way, which people know, you know, that Yeshua, they call it the Brekadasha, the renewed covenant. But we're going to go through some details on it. But this is the Davidic covenant revealing even in Ma'ashi in the Brit Kadasha, showing the details with references of the Psalms, the, 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 the Nebuah or the Naba act that was being spoken into being and calling into being of, of, the, of the seed of David, the Messiah shall come forth. As you're getting a layout, a layer by layer of understanding and revelation concerning the seven covenants. Like I said, some people say five, some people say six, some people say seven. Um, I'm showing the seven because there was a, the, the covenant with David set things in order for a bayit of Yahuwah, of Yeshua, the house of Yahuwah, they called the temple. Okay? The, the covenant with David and, and in the beginning with Shalomon for the house of Israel, um, for, the, for the house of Yahuwah, number one. All the performance of sacrifices and bringing the Ark of the Covenant in there and all the additional information of, of that covenant of his seed and his generations shall always have a sovereign somewhere, okay? Lineage, line, lining up somewhere. So as we look at this, it is very important to throw in the Davidic uh, covenant. Some people leave it out, but I brought it in because it's very important because it's the covenant that leads to understand that, that the, our Mashiach, our Mashiach, okay, came from his seed, which we all know that through some most scriptures, but this is the reference towards it. And then what we will be doing, we'll be showing in uh, totally uh, the renewed Brit covenant next week. Uh, very soon when I get settled back in, uh, in Plano, Texas, because I have to prepare for the feast there, we're going to start having a midweek reading. Uh, I want to continue what Shepherd Chuck did and finish all the scriptures. So we have a playlist of scriptures reading out of the ISR or the Hallelujah. So we're going to continue the verses, the chapters that he already did and the books. And we're going to continue on reading it. So eventually we can have the whole scriptures uh, so people can turn on. And I might start doing it with the, the Orthodox Jewish translation so I could teach you some phonetic sounds in Hebrew uh, to continue that great work that, that Shepherd Chuck did from Eagle Saving uh, a, a year ago. You know, he started that and, he, and then he, he stopped it. So we're going to continue that in the middle of the week because some people want some fellowship. And we'll do some commentary with it probably too. Okay. So I thank you for tuning in. If you are interested 
And thank you for them that are waiting for me to get back to my supply so I can email you. If you email me at, or I can, I can email you the, 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 the Word PowerPoints or the PDF files of all, any information you request, or you can email me at ministry at yahoo.com and give me your full name and address so I can send you free music or any videos of uh, Abia or our teaching as well. So if you want PDF only, I can send it to you. I can send you uh, um, what we call uh, uh, the, 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 the pamphlets in a template so you can print your own if you live out of the country and it's hard to mail it to you. So, but if you want a copy of a hard copy of this color brochure of replacing theology being redirected, corrected, and crafted into the house of Israel, you email me and give me your full name and address and I will do it for free. I am backlogged, I know, because I've been gone about a month, uh, but I'm headed back and I will resupply you, uh, mail, do all my mail outs uh, to everybody. And I thank you for tuning in. And I just... I just so it's so wonderful to have the opportunity to come to be with you, and I just Baruch Haba Bashem Yahua, that may may He come upon you in His name, may He overshadow you and keep you, make His face shine upon you and show favor to you, and lift up His countenance upon you and give you shalom, based on a number six twenty four through twenty six, and I just. Thank the Father for the opportunity and you to allow me to come into your home and, and we love you and you just have a good shalom in your Shabbat if it's today or if you do it in another date of another calendar. It is great. We, we celebrate it by a pre-recording with you and uh, just thank you for the opportunity. We love you. This is Eliyahu signing off from Eagles Haven Ministry and EliyahuChannel.com Also uh, Benai or should I say Ephraim Benai Yesharel and, and Benai uh, of the Bayit of Yesharel, the house and the sons of Israel. Love you and see you later. Until next time.